important thing to talk about. Um, this one I forgot to put in here. I don't know why until I added it. I was thinking about it when Shane was talking. But um, staying organized, if you, in both like your work and just like your brain and your mind and like keeping your thoughts organized, um, oh, excuse me. If you want to be able to <laughs> lead the team, you, you have to, I don't know what Shane was talking about, like you really have to know your staff. Um, you have to, you know, not have paperwork that's lost, like, oh yeah, I forgot that somewhere, or, you know, where did I, I wrote that down somewhere, I forgot to tell this person, like, those types of things, staying on top of your stuff, having everything in one area, um, you know, and knowing, like, when you said things would be due, and those types of things are really going to help, and I know it's, I've like had a really hard time with that um, this year. It's just like staying on top of all the like work stuff and the due dates. And when I said I an RA was going to have something done by, because um, all that is just going to it's just going to make your job easier and make you a better leader and a better resource for them. Okay, and the last part is like the stuff that I put a lot of writing in, and I kind of listed off some things that I felt like over this past year I've learned are important characteristics of a leader, um, just in things that I've picked up and things that I've seen in my fellow RDs that like have really stood out to me and I think every leader should have these qualities. So the first one is um, to be clear headed and to think logically and so that's what Shane was talking about. You're going to be put on the spot, you're going to need to know what to say and what to do and be on your toes and you have to there's going to be moments where you like want to freak out and you just have to say like take a deep breath take five seconds clear your mind and make a decision you know and um you can't be a panicker for sure and i don't think any of you guys are that's why you're here but um definitely knowing how to think clearly in hard situations um being self-controlled is huge um there's going to be times where you want to, you know, something happens in a meeting and someone says something and you want to call them out right there, whether it's in our, our all staff, you know, our staff meetings with admins or in our meetings with RAs and you have to, like, hold your tongue. Or there's going to be things where you want to bash on, you know, something that someone did or, yeah, I didn't like when that director did that and you're going to hold your tongue. Like, you have to be self-controlled because, again, like, you're representing CHOP not just for the residents but for the RAs. And, um, and yeah, be self-controlled in speaking with others in emergency situations, kind of, you know, like what I was talking about with being, um, thinking logically. And then with frustrations, like the phone, you're, there's going to be days where you get so many calls and you want to be so annoyed and answer it and just be frustrated. But, uh, again, like I think a leader is someone who has like that cool headed, um, calm kind of attitude and, um, it's just something you need to need to be thinking about. Um, you need to take responsibility. We talked about this a lot, but for your actions when you mess up, like whether it's to your RAs or to Anna, um, just being honest about it, being like, yeah, I did this, I, I miscommunicated, I'm sorry. Um, and for your RAs, I think that's another thing. Like I've, we, One thing we talked about in summer training with RDs that like I really liked was we had some worksheet and it said that like a leader takes responsibility for like the people who are like not below them but you know that are like working for them or they're leading and um, at first I was kind of like well, what the heck like, that's gonna make you look bad and make you look like a bad leader and um, some of the times it isn't because you're a bad leader maybe you just have a knucklehead on your team who's never does their job um, and some of the times it is because you're a bad leader and because you messed up and you did something wrong, but either way, it's like, oh yeah, that's my team, I'm sorry, like, like that's my fault, and that happens, and I don't know if I'm the only one that's happened to in our meetings, but they ask you about something that was supposed to be done, and you know it wasn't your job, you gave it to someone else, but you're like, oh, sorry, like, yeah, it'll be done tomorrow, you know, and it sucks, because you feel like you look so bad, but um, it's your job. Um, the next quality I put is caring, that goes back into, knowing your staff, really caring about them, listening to them when they need you, um, and yeah, I don't think that needs a lot of explanation. E, being independent. Um, 
like I said, you're going to be that behind the scenes person. You're going to take initiative and you're not necessarily going to be told, but it's going to make make your RAs look better. And then I think the last one I put on there is selfless. Selfless. It's about the team and TROP, not about you. And I think that's the biggest quality of a leader. Um, I don't know. I just, I think, I think that's what's going to make your RAs know that like you you really care about them and your you know your supervisors know that you really care about TROP and um, you know whatever that means to you to be selfless like think about that on your own and bring that to the job and oh, I think it's important so. and we all help each other out and we're selfless I think a lot so at least these guys are and I appreciate that so yeah. That's my spiel. <laughs> Hope I didn't talk too much. Mm -hmm. um, I have a few points with Juliet was bringing up frustrations. You're you're gonna have them. It's it's natural if if you don't have them, then you're doing something wrong. To be honest, um, you're you need to have a vet buddy within the RD team. You're you're not going to another RA like Juliet said, and you're venting that way. You're choosing someone on your on the RD team or you're coming to me. I mean, if they these guys have a frustration, I'll sit there and listen to them and sometimes we'll get into more confidentiality, but there's levels of knowledge. So there's so, at different levels, there's so much knowledge that you're privy to. And a lot of times that's because it's a need to know basis or the less people that know, um, the less they're held responsible for that information. So if they come in and they vent to me about a frustration, I can, and it's something that I can share 50% of it, but I know that 50% is gonna make them feel better and help them understand, then I'll give that to them. And sometimes if it's a frustration that an RA has that they come to me with, I'll say, okay, this is what, this is for your knowledge. Now let's discuss how we can talk to the RA and this can be to their knowledge. And that might only be 25% of that. But I'll work with them to find a way to lessen the blow or lessen the frustration so that the, the RA or them understands that I am listening. And a lot of times I'll say to them, okay, well, I need to discuss that with Dave or I need to take that to Ben. And, and I will because if they're frustrated about it, someone else is probably frustrated as as well um, and taking responsibility I mean these guys have come to me and it's on rare occasions but they've messed up or I've had to talk to them and it's an educational experience I don't bring them in my office close the door and scream at them it's as my perceptions have sometimes been known <laughs> but it's it's something where we sit down and we talk about it and we figure out how we can learn from the situation and we talk about what we would do next time so that that situation doesn't happen again. Because I won't let them out to dry. It's not them just messing up with something. It's what didn't I do as well as a supervisor for them not to know that was in my communication. Did I not guide them in the right way? So, um, even in that in admin meetings, if they say that's my fault, I'll say I didn't send that or I didn't. There's no reason why they should be falling for something because it's not just their department, and we're all the same team as well. Um, <laughs> and then with delegate, we'll talk a little bit about delegating, but talking about helping one another out and being part of being a leader is passing things on, and I will pass. I get things passed down to me and there's some things that I may pass down to them and they can tell me no if they honestly can't do it. So it's something where they're, they have a big, big midterm the next day. Um, so we just rearrange some things around or they're just too busy and things piled up. Okay, I would rather spend more time in the office than school being a last resort and grades dropping and them getting a little bit of personal time. 
So don't be afraid. I mean, if you constantly say no to me, we're going to have a discussion and see what's, what's going on. But it is okay to say, say no, or I just don't have time, or cannot wait till next week. Erica. Yeah, and a lot of this stuff goes with the relationship you have with your RAs as well as the relationship you have with your fellow RDs. Like, knowing them and being, like, the leader of the RAs, knowing, like, who doesn't like to say no and who doesn't like to just you know, ask to do things, like assign things to people who may not ask to do them and don't assign things to people who can't say no. And that's same with like RDs, like Anna will ask me to do something and even though I have so much on my plate, I'll say it in a way and Anna will know how I say it when I can do it and know how I'll say it when I can't do it and she'll go, you know what, never mind, like, and she'll take it away from me even though I want, I'm like, no, 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 I can do it, I can do it, but she knows that I can't. And so it's knowing each other and knowing like what our boundaries are. And then it's also like with the event buddy, like even today I was having a really just bad day and I was in the RA room and I just was going off with Juliet. And it was about nothing. It was about nothing, but it was something that helped me and now I'm better. But I could never do that with like, and I shouldn't do that with another RA. And if another RA was in there, I probably would have, bit my tongue because I would have said something that was inappropriate and um, that's just like finding those people that you can I mean I'll be up all night with all three of these guys just going off about something and the next day even though nothing's really changed just being able to say it feels good because you get so much information from RAs and from other staff members and you're listening almost 85% of the time, and that 15%, sometimes you need to be 